Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. The um, lecture on my thought this week will be on a topic never alone. When we read in the Torah about the creation of the world, God repeats the word tov, good, again and again. The first time that he says the words lo tov, that it was not good, was in reference to man being alone. Based on this fact, God created Chava, the first woman, as a separate and unique individual. The Talmud in Shavuos 39a states, Kol Yisrael Arevim Zalozeh, that every Jew is responsible one for another. A Jew is never alone. We read in the book of Yoshua 7.1, it says there, and the children of Israel committed a sin. The sin that is referred to was committed by only one individual, Achlan, and yet the sin is attributed to the whole nation. But why? Why was the whole nation held accountable and punished for Achlan's transgression? There is only one time that the Jewish army was defeated while conquering the land, and that was in the Battle of Ai. In that battle, the nation suffered the loss of 36 men. When the Jewish nation accepted the Torah on Mount Sinai, they accepted upon themselves the concept of arvus, which is mutual culpability. The Talmud in Tractate Shavuos 39a states that we learn this concept from the verse in the third book of the Torah in the portion of Bahu Kotai 26.37, which reads, Koshlu ish be'ochiv v'koshlu ish be'ochiv, and one man will stumble over his brother, and the sages interpret this to mean that one man will stumble because of the sin of his brother, thus the concept of mutual culpability. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, a blessed memory, expressed three interpretations of the Hebrew word arvus. The first interpretation is sweet from the Hebrew word ariv, that every Jew should consider another Jew sweet. Second interpretation is intertwined, which is similar to the Hebrew word um, eruv, that every Jew is totally intertwined with another Jew. And the third interpretation, again, is mutual responsibility, that every Jew is responsible for the action of his fellow Jew. Now, the Rebbe stated that through our Torah, all Jews become one nation connected to one God, who is our Lord and who is one. This concept of arvus is essential in our being able to fulfill all 613 commandments, which God Almighty in his Torah commands us to keep. This is our obligation as Jews. Yet, when looking at these 613 commandments that we are obligated to observe, well, it becomes quite evident that it is literally impossible for any one person to fulfill all of these commandments. Not everyone is a Kohen. And even if you are, only one Kohen can be the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. There is a law, a mitzvah, that a thief must return the item that he has stolen before he can be totally forgiven. So, well, if you haven't stolen anything, you could not be able to fulfill this commandment. Then there are the commandments that are associated only with men or only with women. The laws of divorce, circumcision, redemption of the firstborn, or animal, uh, etc. Even more difficult to observe are the mitzvot that are even more unusual, such as the para aduma, the red heifer. There have only been nine para dumot in Jewish history. It is our belief that the tenth will be brought with the coming of Mashiach to Cana, may he come quickly and in our time. So, so that being the case, how can we fulfill our Torah obligation to observe all 613 commandments? Answer, by our connection to each and every Jew, past, present, and future. Now, the Torah tells us that at the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, all Jews were present, if not in body, then in soul. So the totality of Jews, even those that would live throughout all, gen all the generations, all of us as one body, accepted all the Torah. Since we are one body, whatever affects one part of the body affects all the body. You know, if your toe hurts, all of your body is in pain, not just your toe. Think of it. When Bertie Madoff was found to be the biggest thief in history, the fact that he was a Jew, hmm, 
made us all feel a little embarrassed. But why? We didn't take a penny, and yet we still shared a bit of the shame. On the other hand, when a professor in Norway receives a Nobel, a Nobel Peace Prize for some scientific theory that we don't know, nor would we be able to understand, somehow <laughs> we feel a certain pride in that a Jew has achieved such a prestigious honor. In Psalm 16, 18, King David says, She visi Hashem lenegdi tamid. I Now I set God before me always. King David was saying that he, he no longer was seeking God's presence in the heights of the heavens. He now had set God before his eyes in anything and everything that he did here on earth. Nothing on earth is so small or so insignificant that God would not want to associate his being with it. We are never alone. There's a beautiful poem that was written by Margaret Fishback Powers in 1964. In the poem, she describes our relationship with our Father in Heaven. It begins, One night I dreamt a dream. As I was walking along a beach with my God, across the dark sky there flashed scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two set of footprints in the sand one belonging to me and the other to my God. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand and I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. Well, this really troubled me and so I asked God about it. I said, dear God, you said to me, that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me at all times. But I noticed that during the saddest and most difficult times in my life, that somehow there was only one set of footprints in the sand. I don't understand. Why, when I needed you the most, would you leave me? Well, God whispered in my ear, my precious child, I love you and I will never abandon you. Never even during your most difficult trials and tribulations. When you saw only one set of footprints in the sand, huh, those footprints were mine. It was I who was carrying you. We need to believe, we need to know with complete certainty that we are never alone. Think of it. Which loving parent abandons their child? Not only that, the more that a child needs their parent, the more love that parent will give to that child. When the Torah describes our relationship with our Father in Heaven, the Torah states, Kol, Kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. When the, nation, when the Jewish nation was redeemed from the servitude of Egypt, the Torah tells us that God heard the Kol, the cry of the people. The verse in the portion of Shemos, Exodus 2.24 reads, The Yishma Hashem is not a kosom, and God heard their cries. It is only later in the verse that it says, and God heard their prayers. Just like any benevolent parent, when they hear the cry of their child, they immediately jump into action. So too, God Almighty re reacted to the cries of his children in Egypt. No words, just a desperate plea for salvation. You know, we just celebrated the holiday of Purim. Haman was upset by one Jew, Mordechai, who wouldn't bow down to him. So, punish the one Jew? No. Haman understood that the one Jew represented the Jewish body as a whole. If part of the body sins, then the whole body sins and suffers accordingly. And then there was Esther. She could have easily locked herself safely away in her palace. However, Esther understood that she could not divorce herself from her people, since whatever affected her people affected her as well. She was part of what we call Knesset Yisrael, the entire Jewish nation. In the last of the 13 personal requests that we say in the Amida, the standing prayer during our weekday prayers, we begin the prayer with a request to God Almighty that he shema kolenu, hear our voice. It is only later that we ask him to accept to filosenu, our prayers. There are times in life when words cannot truly express 
the deep pain and agony that we experience. All we can do is cry out. Cry out to our Father in heaven. And as the prayer states, For you are God who hears prayers and supplications. Our greatest strength is when we believe, when we have perfect faith that He, God Almighty, is always with us and that we are never alone. Since He is always watching over us, whether we deserve it or not is another issue. As we recite three times daily in Psalm 145, verse 18, what we call the Ashrei prayer. It says, Karov Hashem l'kol korov l'kol asher yikru'u be'emet. God is close to all those that call upon him, to all that call on him in truth. Children do not have to deserve for us to help them. We love our children even before they are born. They are privy to unconditional love, and so to our relationship with our Creator, our Father in Heaven, which is even greater. The Holy Baal Shem Tev has told us that God loves us even more than a woman who has been barren and then in her later years she gives birth to a beautiful child. One can only imagine how much love she feels towards that child. Well, God Almighty loves each one of us even more than that barren woman who has finally given birth. God understands only too well that we are a challenged and dysfunctional generation. We suffer from all types of disorders and spiritual handicaps. And though at times we may try to divorce ourselves from his presence, he understands and continues to try to bring us even closer. His love for us is not dependent on anything other than the fact that he is our father. He created us. He formed us from the dust of the earth and then blew from his breath into our nostrils the breath of life. Nothing that we can say or do can change that fact. We are told that the gates of prayer are many times closed, but the gates of tears are never closed. So let us cry out to our Father in heaven that this year should be the last Passover with the coming of Mashiach Sikainu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for listening. God should bless you all. Again, we are very close to Pesach, and again, we're all preparing for that. Again, this should be the last of the redemptions. Again, God saved us in the month of this, and hopefully he'll do the same, and this will be the year. We are definitely ready. So God bless you all. Be safe, be happy, be healthy, and again, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it.